Combines are rolling across the state, and with that, some of the research combines. And Josh, you're out cutting canola today. Yep. What are you seeing in the canola fields? Good things, Dave. Real good things. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's been good across the board from our winter crops. Um, that 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 kind of escape the freeze is is looking pretty good. Um, and we talked about a couple weeks ago that you know canola is one of those ones that uh, we we've seen out here in this field as we were cutting a lot of freeze damage. A lot of that main raceme, uh, you know, either had very minimal pods on it or or had quite a few damaged pods on it. However, the yields as we're pulling it out are are really good. Um, we're talking out here this field and some of our treatments we're, we're looking in between 40 50 55 bushel canola which is really good for us um, especially the year that it's gone through and a lot of that came from the branches and you just got to emphasize it's still a really good crop we start looking out here we got moisture underneath it we have a wheat plot just uh, over across the field here it doesn't have any moisture under it it's pretty dry when we go in and plant double crop we'll, we'll probably plant this one tomorrow um, once we harvest that wheat we're going to need a rain. Uh, so, so there is still quite a few advantages of growing canola. Um, and then if you, if you go on and you look and talk to the folks that are still have canola in their rotation, they're still seeing that really big yield bump from wheat. Uh, following the canola, their fields are cleaner, everything kind of looks good. You said that, that you're harvesting today, you're probably going to start planting tomorrow, if not at some point uh, in the near future. How, how are the summer crops across Oklahoma going as far as planting those? It depends on what mile mark you're at. Uh, just like most of our summers, our storms are real spotty, especially this time of year, this late May, early June. Uh, folks that have kind of hit some moisture um, are still planting, uh, still getting that crop in the ground. When we travel a little bit east of Tulsa, they're just now starting to dry out and start get those crops in the ground. I've heard some folks putting their first soybean and seed in the ground east of Tulsa as of this week. So we're, we're really far behind there. We're in a good spot out west. I uh, seen a lot of corn in the ground looks really good uh, some good sorghum good forage sorghum a lot of great beans some cotton going in so a lot of our summer crops are looking really good now I have got a call or two because we are starting to see corn roll up in the afternoons it's a hundred degrees I think we say it every summer that's okay if it's three o'clock in the afternoon and it's been a hundred degrees since 10 a.m. it's gonna do that corn sorghum what have you or they're gonna roll up soybeans are gonna flop over and show you their underbelly that's okay uh, it, it's it's when that's happening at eight or nine o'clock in the morning with some humidity that's a that's a that's a sign of some severe drought stress it, it's amazing what what a difference a year makes I mean a year ago we were trying to harvest in rain and and, and a lots of moisture seems like the year before we were doing that too this year it's dried out everything's good Talk about how how those those wet cycles during harvest and planting have, have influenced this year's crop and then possibly the future crop. Yeah, and, and a lot of people had some fields fallow out, um, which is not a bad thing. Right. And, and so we're starting to see a lot of crops go into some fallow ground. Maybe they didn't want to put wheat in. And so it's been over a year since we've had the crop in the ground. That th Those have been able to go in really early, uh, really timely and in good, good sort of condition. But the same kind of issues we have when it's really wet happen actually when it's really dry as well. We're talking about really shallow root systems. Um, if the crop doesn't have uh, the, the moisture real early to get those really, really deep roots, we're going to continue to have issues. Um, don't tell those guys out east we're dry, we're getting too dry because they're dealing with the opposite issue. Once again, it's another year like last year for those folks where they're getting in late, dealing with some real soggy conditions on, on already some soggier ground. Ag by the mile marker in Oklahoma. That's how it always goes, man. Dr. Josh Lofton, cropping system specialist here at Oklahoma State University.